Today's daf is Bez Hashem, Mesach the Gittin, daf Mem Gimel. Uh, we're going to begin with daf Mem Bez, Mem Bez from the Iboy Lahu. So the Gemara over here is discussing if uh, a man gave, uh, was Mafkir his slave. In other words, he's told his slave, you can go free. Now, the, technically, he has to also write a freedom document. He has to write a Get Shikhar. So during that period, he's no more the owner um, up until he gets to get Shikhar, he's not the owner of the slave anymore because he relinquished his rights for the slave, yet the the the, the slave is not completely free because the paperwork has not been done. The get Shikhar has not been written. So Gmar's question is, he bailed a question. Uk of get Shikhar, someone has a delay in getting the get Shikhar. So now, if he's this, the slave of a Koyen, the slave of a Koyen normally eats Truma, but here, the, he this this person is in limbo. So, does he eat truma or does he not eat truma? So, what's the question? When the Torah says a slave of a coin eats truma, it's king and kaspay or marchmana. A high law, king and kaspay. Torah allows for the slave that's purchased by a that's purchased by a the coin to eat truma. But here, the 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 coin relinquished his rights to the to the slave. He's making him free, and he's mafkaret. So therefore, this is not called the Kenyan cosplay. It's not something that you have a monetary ownership of, of, of a slave, and therefore the slave would not eat truma. I dilma may be keeping the Mechosobal get shikhar since at, at the paperwork has not been uh, 100% done. In other words, the, the slave is your slave because you still need to write a get shikhar, a freedom document. So Kenyan cosplay, Karina Bay, maybe it's still called your Kenyan cosplay. It's called your ownership and therefore and therefore uh the, the the slave would be allowed to eat truma Toshma come in here to Amarav Masharshia we learned Masharshia told us another story and from Masharshia's uh story we're going to de derive that um the person could eat truma the story is goes like this Kohanis the wife of a Kohen that gave birth but Shinas Arav Lada her baby got mixed up with Vlad Shivchasu with the baby of her maid. Both her and her maid went into the into labor at the same times, and the babies got mixed up. Well, technically, both children could eat truma because they're the either the son of the coin or the slave of a coin. So as the children grow up, they can eat truma. But they both should, when they try to collect truma, even though a slave of a coin is allowed to collect truma, but he always has to have his master with him for a different reason. But but these two boys, as they grow up, should go when they try to collect truma from the threshold of, of people's, from the granary of people's uh, who are supposed to give them truma, they should go together and do it. Higdilu, when they get older, right? They get over bar mitzvah, hataravis, these mixed up babies. Meshachar and Zazah, they should provide freedom to one each other. Because you don't know who's the slave, and you don't know who is the who is the son of the coin. But the bottom line is, although we know the slave is going to get freed, until he gets that freedom document, he's allowed to eat truma. So we see from here that uh, that if a, a slave, as long as he did not receive the the get shechra, is allowed to eat truma. That's the Gemara's proof. So Gemara the Gemara the Gemara refutes that. The Gemara says, how can you compare? If Elio Navi would come and say that that this person is the baby of the of this is this baby slave, so you wouldn't even be required to free them because now you know if Elio Navi just walked into your house and says this is the son of the slave, this is the baby that was the slave, so therefore that would be considered you own this, you actually actually own. Uh, a monetary ownership of that person, and therefore he could eat truma. But over here, you relinquished ownership of the of the slave. You said, "I'm freeing my slave." Now, what you need to do, you needed to write the document. So, lav kinyan kaspehu klal. Maybe it's not. We wouldn't consider that you own that slave anymore, and therefore the slave would not be allowed to eat truma, although he didn't receive his get shechra. But still. He, the owner relinquished ownership. The coin who owned the slave relinquished the ownership by saying uh, he was mafkir the slave. So therefore, perhaps he would not be able to allow to eat truma anymore. The Gemara says like this: Ibailu, I'm going to ask you another question. A slave that his master 
sold him for knas. In other words, he sold a slave. And the halacha is that if a slave gets gored, the Torah tells us that if a slave gets gored by an animal, by an ox, and gets killed, the owner of the ox has to pay shloishim shkolem, has to pay 30 shekel. Now, if a man makes sells the his slave to somebody else, to a stranger, and uh, to somebody else, with only the only sale is that if this slave would be get get gored by an ox, you could get to keep the knas. Is that considered a valid sale? Or any Is that a, not a valid sale? So the Gemara says, the boiler ameo, the boiler rabbonim. I could ask this question according to a mayor, and I could ask this question according to rabbonim. The boiler I'm going to ask this question to Rameir. Rameir says that a person could sell something that is non existent yet. Remember, this event did not happen yet. And this event is a bet that if it does happen, the, the purchaser should be able to co- be able to collect the knas. So Rameir says, the Rameir says that a person could be Matadish a woman, a, 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 a non a Goyish woman, and say, I'm giving you Kedushin. When you become a ger, you're going to be my wife. So is the Kedushin a valid Kedushin? Rameir says it works. So Ad Khan, but Rameir seems to say you could purchase something or sell something that's non-existent. For example, you sell uh, a tree that uh, you say that if it gives off fruit, when it gives off fru- fruit, you can have the fruit. Can you sell it as long uh, while the, the, the tree did not give off the fruits yet? So the Gemara says like this, Ad Khan Lankama Rameir, Rameir did not say, Rameir is limited. He said, when did Rameir say, a person could sell something that did not come into this world, because the fruit, the fruit of the, of a palm tree, that it's eventually going to come. It's a guarantee going to come. Aval Hocha over here, Mi Yema de Mingach, Who's going to tell you? Who's going to tell you that this event, this slave, is eventually going to get gored? Even you want to say that this slave is going to get gored, how do you know that the the owner of the ox is going to pay the the knas? You go to remember Gimel Amar Aleph. Maybe he's going to run to Bezdin and say, "Ah, oh, my my ox gored the slave," and he will be exempt from paying the the knas. So therefore, this sale is invalid, even according to Rameir, because it's a, a non-existent bet. It's maybe it's it it maybe it'll never occur. But, uh, but a fruit tree eventually will give off fruit, so may, that's why it works. That's why Rameir says it can work. Then the Gemara says, "Let's ask this question according to Rabbanon." Over there that the, the Rabbanon didn't say that a person can't sell something that did not come to this world. Only a fruit tree that did not give off fruit, Rabbanon say that if you sell the fruits and the fruits are not on the tree yet, it's going to happen in the season, but it's not yet producing fruit, that sale is the invalid sale. But that's only by a fruit tree because the fruits are not here. Avahacha over here, the potential knas of this slave is all the ingredients are there are in existence. Hakoishar, there's there exists the ox that's going to potentially gore the evid. Hakoishar, and the evid is here. So the the items of the event are in existence of the world in in the world. So would Rabbanon agree that the sale is a valid sale? My, what's the din? So again, the question of the Gemara is: A man sold his evid not to serve some other owner, but he sold the evid that in case there's a knas payment. Because the Evid was killed by an ox, you get to keep it. Is that a good sale? The event didn't happen yet. Omar Ababa, or Ababa said, Toshima, come here from this Brisa. Fosik says, Vilid bias, ma Talmud loima. Torah says that if a baby is born in the house of a Koyen, a baby shifcha, a baby from a shifcha Kanainis, right? A, sla- uh, a shifcha Kanainis gave birth to a slave. So that slave could is permitted to eat truma. So the Gemara says, Ma Talmud Lama. Why does the Torah have to tell you that slave that was born in the house of a coin eats truma? In King Kesav, Oichel Yelid Bayis Lokal Shkem. The Torah tells you that if the coin purchases a Evid, that Evid now eats truma. Certainly, if it was born in his house, it would eat truma. So the Gemara says, the Brisa says, Ilikain. If it would just say that, Hoyisa Oimet Ma King Kesav Yesh Boy Shavakasav Oichel Afilid Bayis Shiyesh Boy Shavakasav Oichel. 
Omanayin Shafo Pi Sha'enoi Shava Kulum. I would think that that just like when you purchase a slave, it has a value. So also the babies that are born in the house of the coin from the Shivcha, the only time it would eat truma is only if it has some sort of value. If it's just the baby, it wouldn't it, you wouldn't be allowed to give a truma because it's not worth anything money, any money on the slave market. Maybe when it gets older, it's worth something on the slave market, only then it could eat truma. How do you know when it's not worth anything, it could eat truma? That's why the Torah says yielded bias. Anything born in the house, no matter what it's worth, it eats truma. So now the Gemara goes in reverse way. By Dayanani, I'll still say yielded bias. If it was born in the house, if it's whether it's worth money, whether it's not worth money, it does eat truma. Kenyan Kesef, by Kenyan Kesef, if you purchase a slave, an adult slave, only if it's worth money, it eats truma. But here's the key words. Ain boy shavakasev. If you purchase an adult slave that's not worth any money, ain oichel. I would think that type of slave would not eat truma. Now, why? What are you purchasing if it's not worth any money? That's another story. But let's see. You have got a slave that's now worth not any money. It's not worth any money. You, maybe you purchase it and it became worthless. Talmud loy me kinyan kaspei lid beis. So we compare Yelid Bias to Kenyan Kaspai. That just like Yelid Bias, it, if it's born in the house, it doesn't mean, even if it's not worth anything, it eats Truma. So even if slave that you purchased, even if slave that you purchased, that's not worth any money, it would still be eating Truma. Now, the Gemara takes issue of how is that is it that you have a possibility of a slave not worth any money? You could always sell the slave in the black market, in a, in a market for the knas. Then in case it would be gored, uh, somebody else could keep, keep the knas. The Esau could I take ever to Machari Rabbi the knas. Machar, that there's a possibility to sell a, a slave just for the knas, and it would be a valid sale. So is there possible to have a slave that was not sold for knas? That's not sold for, that you can't sell for knas? I mean, every slave potentially could be sold that in case it's gourd, that somebody else could keep the knas. So every slave inherently has some is worth some money. So how is the, what is the case of a Kenyan Kaspoy that's not worth anything? The Gemara says, and it's possible to have a slave not worth any money. Ike Eved Trefa. If the Eved is a Trefa, it's like a mangled, let's say it's going to die within the year. It's, let's say it has a really damaged major organ. So therefore, in case that Eved would be gored, the owner of the ox would not have to pay the 30 shekel. Why? Because it was going to die anyway. So it's valueless. That type of person you can't even sell for the knas. So the Gemara says, v'achazi to make him kame. But even at that type of, of Eved could still do some service to, to his master, maybe bring him a supper or something like that. So the answer is benuval mukashchem. He's also disgusting and full of boils. So if he's a benuval mukashchem and he's a trefa, that's what the Bryce is talking about. He has both of these issues, and that bri that is a, a slave that's worthless. You can't even sell it for anything, and because of that, therefore, you would think that it wouldn't be allowed to eat truma. That's why the Chumash says it could eat truma. So the, to review, really, the Gemara never resolved anything over here. Doesn't resolve. Can a person sell an Evid just for Knas or not? That remains unresolved. New question of the Gemara. Iboy Lahu, come in here. Uh, well, I have a question. Let's v just visualize this over here. This is called a Chatsi Isha, Chatsi Ben Choran. Now, so we have a Ben Choran that could be the, the part of the person could marry a Bas Yisrael. Part of him, if he's a half a slave and a half a Ben Choran, this part cannot marry a Jewish girl. So that's the Gemara's question over here. Uh, a person that is as half a slave and a half a free person. Shekidus bas that gave Kedushim to a free woman. Uh, to a, let's say, a Beisako girl. And he's a half a slave and a half a Ben Choran. So Mahu, would that Kedushim work? And the Gemara is going to say like this. I could want, if you want, I could try to uh, resolve that question. 
Because we know a uh, halacha, ben Yisrael, she'om le'bas Yisrael, hiskachi lechetzi. If a man says to a regular Jewish girl, I want half of you, I want you to be mekudashis to half of me. So mekudashis, she's mekudashis. Ah, you're marrying a half a husband? What he basically means to say is that I'm going to potentially take another wife. So you're just half of my wives. So it's Mukudeshes. So why wouldn't you say Chetzi Eved, Chetzi Ben Chorim? She's going to be married to half of him. So that maybe that works. So over there, it, uh, you can't compare it because there, Iskachi Lechetzi, by a regular case, the Chazi Lekuli, potentially she could be the only wife and marry his entire being, 100% husband to one wife. Ha, but in the case of Chetzi Eved, Chetzi Ben Chorim, Loi Chazi Lekuli. This girl cannot marry his entire being because half of him is a slave. He could only marry 50% of a husband. Maybe it doesn't work, as you can see. So maybe it, this type of kedushin will not work. The Im Tim Tzulayim, if you want to say, Ben Yisrael, Mekadosh, Chatsi Isha, Enimukadosh, let's say it doesn't work because we find if a regular Jew is Mekadosh, a half a woman, he says to a woman, half of you is Mekadosh to me. So he splits the woman in half. There, it doesn't work. Why? Because he left something on the table. You're supposed to be Mikadosh 100% woman. Because this woman cannot have two husbands. So you're supposed to be Mikadosh, the entire woman. So you left over something you didn't purchase. You left something on the table. But the slave, this slave, this slave, right? That's marrying a regular Bas Yisrael. He didn't leave anything on the table. Basically, he's saying my entire Ben Choyrim part of me should is should be engaged to you, Miss Bas Yisrael. So maybe Loi Shaya Bekinyon, he didn't leave anything on the table. He didn't leave anything in the sale that he did not sell. So, uh, so therefore, my maybe it would work. So the my the Gemara asks the question and wants to know what's the din. So the Gemara says, Thomas Shema, come in here. Hey, Miss Misha Chetzi Eved Chetzi Ben Choyrim. If an animal gored a half a Eved and a half a Ben Choyrim. He gives half the knas to his rabbi and half the knas, half the koifer for the yarshim. In other words, uh, in other words, that since he's a chatsi avid chatsi and you have 30 shekel on the table because he was killed, so half goes to the master that still owns him, and the other 50% of that knas goes to his family, his Jewish kids. Now, so we see clearly that the Chetzi Eved, Chetzi Ben Chorin could actually get married and have Yarshim. So we see that a Chetzi Eved, Chetzi Ben Chorin, that's Mekadish, a Jewish girl, the Kedushin would work. That's the Gemara's question. The Amr, if you want to say Kedushin, Lav Kedushin, if the Chetzi Eved, Chetzi Ben Chorin uh, gives Kedushin to a regular Bas Yisrael, it wouldn't work. Yarshim and Ali, then how does he have Yarshim? How does he, how does he end up with kids? Amr Rav Ada, Rav, he, the Bryce is talking about he doesn't have kids. And Kisha the animal killed, didn't we actually kill him. It just maimed, uh, maimed him so that this slave is going to die within a month or two. So therefore, and what does it mean that you split the knas? Ma, you split the 50% of the knas goes to the rabbi. 50% of the knas goes to his yorshim. My yorshim, nafsheh, goes to him himself. But it, it doesn't, he, obviously he didn't get married. He's not allowed to get married. So this price is not a question. Uh, there's not a risa, it doesn't resolve anything. Amar Rav, Rav still says that Rav Adabar uh, uh push off of the brisa and terrets on the brisa is not correct. First of all, stay two I have two problems. Chada, the Yarshev Kadani. The brisa clearly says that he has children. Yarshev means children, inheritors, which means that he got married and has children. This Chetzi Eved, Chetzi Ben Choran. Void, you want to say he didn't die? Koifahu, this is a knas of called koifer. The animal owner of the ox does not pay this koifer of three sh 30 shekel only after the the Eved dies, not if he's still alive, although we know he's going to die. There is no payment. So what does it mean? 50% goes to his yarshif. It must be that he got married. Ella Amar Rav, Rav says he could still say, really he can't get married. And what the Bryce means, you pay 50% to his yarshif means if he if if he would have 
allowed to have Yarshim, then you would give 50% to the Yarshim. But really, he can't because the Chatsi Eved, Chatsi Ben Chorin, cannot get engaged to a Jewish girl. So the Gemara really leaves this unresolved. Again, uh, Ben Yisrael, uh, uh, a, a Chatsi Eved, Chatsi Ben Chorin, that gave Kedushin to a regular Jewish girl, is it a good Kedushin or not? The Gemara leaves that unresolved. Now the Gemara goes to the other side. What happens if you have a chatzis shivcha of a chatzis bascharin? A half a shivcha, a half a maid, and a half a bascharin. So Amar Rav, Rav says, the shame shall make kaddish chatzis isha ene mekudeshes, just like someone who gives kedushin to a half a woman doesn't become mekudeshes. You go to a woman, say half of you, a mekudesh, just half of you, it doesn't work. Ha chatzis shivcha of chatzis bascharin shen niskadesha ein kedusha kedushim. So also a half a shivcha and a half a bascharin that became Mukudashes, the Kedushin is not a good Kedushin because you're basically only Mimikadish, a half of the, the lady, which is the Baschorin. So therefore, Ein Kedusheho Kedushin, Kedushin doesn't work. Darish Rabba Baravuna, Rabba Baravuna agreed with that and he mounted it in his speech. Kashem Shama Kadish Chachi Isha Ein Mukudashes, just like if you give Kedushin to a half a woman. It's not a good Kedushin. Ka Chachi Shivka Vachachi Baschorin. You have a woman who's a half a shivcha and a half a baschorin, shiniskacha, that someone gave her kedushin, ain't a kedushin, she would not get kedushin. Amale Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda uh, asked Rabbi Baravuna, maybe you got it wrong. Me dummy. How could you compare Makadish chatzi isha to a chatzi shivcha, chatzi baschorin? Awesome. By Makadish chatzi isha, shaya bikiyana. You left something on the table. You only Makadish 50% of a woman. You should be Makadish 100% of a woman. Hach over here, when you Makadish a half a shivcha, half a baschorin, you Makadish the, the baschorin part, all that you could be Makadish her. Loi shaya bikiyana. You didn't leave anything out. So, Hoda oikim rabba. So, rabba barafuna heard Rav Chizda's, uh thought process. And com- and uh, Taina against his psak. So Oikim Rabba Barhuna Amirale, he made a new announcement in his speech and he changed his mind, the Darash and he darshan. Sometimes you have a stumbling block under your feet. That was the Pasak in Yeshaya that refers to Divre Torah as a stumbling block. And it's a big lesson that you need to make mistakes in order to become a Paisik. A person cannot be a Paisik and understand the truth of Torah only if you make a mistake. So I'm going to reverse myself. I made a mistake. I'm going to say the opposite and just say, even though it's true, if you give Kedushin to half a woman, it's not Mekudashis. Half a Shifcha and a half a Baschorim. That got Kedushin, the Kedushin is a valid Kedushin. My Tama, what's the reason? Over there, by the half a Isha, you left something on the table. Therefore, it's not Mugudashis. Over here, you didn't leave anything on the table. Whatever you could have been Mekadish of this Chachi Shifcha, Chachi Baschorim, the Baschorim part, you got the full, uh, full Baschorim part. And therefore, it works. The Gemara continues and says, Omar of Sheshis, Rav Sheshis Rav says, Rav Sheshis still doesn't hold that a Chatsi Shifchen, Chatsi Baschorin could become Mukudashis. In other words, what basically he's saying, she can never get married to anybody. Kishem Shema Kaddish Chatsi Isha Eina Mukudashis. Ta Chatsi Shifchen, Chatsi Baschorin, Shneskatsha, Ein Kedusha Al Kedusha. Her Kedushin is not a good Kedusha. A Chatsi Shifchen, Chatsi Baschorin. Remember, how do you have such a situation? You have two owners. And to one of them, freed the shivcha. So she's 50% a shivcha, now 50% a free a free lady, uh, a bas Yisrael. If someone gives her kedushin, kedushin is not a good kedushin. Now, now the Gemara is going to say, Rav Sheish just says, but wait a second. The Torah describes a situation, which we had yesterday, of ish, ki ish, isha, if a man sleeps with a married woman, and the this married woman is a half a Isha, half, half a Shibcha, and a half a Baschorin. That's what the Pasuk says. Seems to imply. So in that case, the Torah says, that even if it was amazed, all you have to do is bring a carbon. But you see the concept of the Torah 
discussing a chazi shivcha, chazi bascharim that engage, engage to a, a Jew. So vim lachshech adam loymer, somebody's going to whisper to you and tell you you got it wrong because eze he shivcha charufa, because the Torah asks, actually says, what is a shivcha charufa written in the Torah? that got engaged to a Jewish slave, or for that matter, to a regular Israel. Alma, so we see in the Chumash, Bas Isrusehi, that is, that woman is, is somebody who could potentially get engaged. And this is how Rabbi Yakiva interpreted that Pasik. So of this Pasik, that it's talking about a half a Isha, a half a a half a half a shivcha, a half a batzkorin that got engaged to an evet ivri, or for that matter, even if it got engaged to a bas to a regular Jew, it would uh, uh, the Torah describes the halachas that bemezid you don't get misa for for such an for for, for if she has an extramarital affair, but rather she gets malchus, he has to bring a carbon. But we see the concept that she could get engaged to somebody. So if somebody says that to you. Tell them they're learning wrong shot in the Pasuk. That's what Rav Shesha says. Emeloi, Kala hates Rabbi Shmuel. Just look what, how Rabbi Shmuel interprets that Pasuk. Rabbi Shmuel interprets that Pasuk, Shu Oymer B'Shifcha Kananya Samurasa Le'evet Ivri. Rabbi Shmuel interprets that Pasuk as a Shifcha Kananyas that's engaged to a Jewish slave. A total 100% Shifcha Kananyas. Now, certainly when a Shifcha Kananyas gets married to an Evet Ivri, there's no real engagement there. They're just partners. They're not really married like like a, like with a kedushin and 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 a chupa. So and the shivcha k'nai is pas is rusehi. So elamai is loch lamema. My muures is muchedes. When Shmuel uses the word hamurasa, it means that they're designated for each other. They're partners with each other. So that's how he said because the Torah doesn't say that they're actually married. The Torah uses the word nechrefes means nechrefes means that they are. You know, designate, designated for each other. Hachinami, even if you say that the Pasik is talking about a Chatsi Isha, the Chatsi Baschorem, my Mu'uresis, what does the Pasik mean? Mu'uresis, me new Chedes. It means that they're designated for each other. And therefore, therefore, uh, that's what the Chumash means. And, and, uh, you can't have a refutation from that pasuk and a proof that a chazi shifcha chazi b'scharim could get married. It's not true because because that pasuk is not talking about they're actually married; that they're just partners. And the chiddush of the Torah is that these partners that look like husband and wife, if somebody has a, 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 an extramarital affair with that woman who's a chazi shifcha chazi b'scharim, there's no misa, but you do have to bring a carbon. New Gemara. Amar Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda said, "Chatsi Shifcha and Chatsi Baschorin." Again, Rav Chizda wasn't sure what a Chatsi Shifcha Chatsi Baschorin would would it would it could be marriage being valid if someone gave her a kedushin or not. She niskadish shal ruvein. She became mukudeshes to ruvein. Vinish tachara, and then she became free. Now, just because she became mukudeshes to ruvein doesn't mean that she was married to ruvein. We don't know because of niskadish shimon. Then she became. Mukudeshes to his brother Shimon. So was she married to brother number one, Ruvain? Or was she, is she married to brother number two? Umeshish name, they both died. The Tikhidish is Miss Yabem is the lady. Levi can do Yibam. The third brother can do Yibam. We go to Ahmed Bayes. The Ain Ani Kaira, we don't we call these people Aishish name Mason, the uh, 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 the wife of two dead people. In other words, you could do Yibam, Levi could do Yibam. If it's his brother's wife, not his two brother's wife, because this we wouldn't consider th- that this woman, this Chachi Ishi Shafkin Shabbas Choran, is the brother, is the wife of both of them. Manashach, E Kedusha, Ruven Kedusha. If the Kedusha of Ruven is a good Kedusha, because he was Mikadish her when she was a half a Shifcha and half a Baschorim. Kedusha Shem and Lav Kedusha. Then the Kedusha Shem is not a good Kedusha because she's fully married to Ruven. But if she became freed, and Shimon's Kedushin, the brother gave her Kedushin, is that as good Kedushin? Because now she's a 100% uh, free woman. So Shimon's Kedushin was a good Kedushin. Then Kedushin Ruven, Kedushin. Then you'll say Kedushin Ruven wasn't a good Kedushin. So in that case, Levi can do can do Yibim no matter what. Either it's we will consider her the wife of Ruven, or we'll consider her the wife of Shimon, not the wife of both of them. Now, what's an example 
of a wife of two people, and it's hard to imagine this, that you wouldn't do Yibim. A man died without children, so the woman falls to Yibim. One of the brothers did Maimer, a Kedushin de Rabbanan. He didn't do Yibim, with, which is Bia, he just did, gave her money for Kedushin. And then he died. So now the third brother cannot do Yibim. Why? He only can do Chalitza. Because we considered it as if she was a, she's the wife of the two brothers. And you could only do uh, Yibim if it's a wife of one brother. That's that's different story. But here, it's 100% the wife of Ruve, or 100% the wife of Shimon, but not the wife of both. Itmar, a new story. have a half a Shifra and a half a Baschorin. She she got Mukudasha to Ruve. Okay? That's half a Shivka. And then she became free. She became free. The Chazov and Shkachal Shimon. Now she became Mukudasha to Shimon, not his brother, but somebody else, Shimon. So what happened? She became free. Uh, she became free. Rav Yaisa Bacham Omar Rav Nachman. Rav Yaisa said in the name of Rav Nachman, Paku Kedushe Rushin. The first Kedushin imploded. Because now that she becomes free, she becomes like a brand new person. She's like a, a ger. She was a 50% Jew. She became a 100% Jew, Jewish ger. So now she's a different person. So she's no longer married to Uvein. And therefore, Kedushi Shimon is now takes over. She got engaged to Shimon. She's now she's now 100% married to Shimon. That's what Rav Yasef says. Rabbi Zeyra, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Zeyra says the name of Nachman. No, Gamru Kedushi Rishon. The Kedushi Rishon, the first guy, Ruven's Kedushin, just expands. In other words, till now, he was only married to 50% of this woman. Now that she became free, and now she's 100% of Ben Chorim, his Kedushin that he originally gave her expanded. So basically, Rabbi Zeyra holds that she's married to Shimon. And Rabbi Yosef holds she's married to Ruven. That's the, that's the Machlekes. Amar Abzeir, Abzeir says, didi mistavra. What I say makes perfectly sense. The Ksiv, the Pasuk says, yumsu ki You don't get, you don't get killed because she wasn't freed. The Tchumish is talking about a chazi shifcha and chazi baschorin. Someone had an adult relationship with her while she's engaged to, to, a, to an Eved Ivri. The Torah says, you don't kill the man because she's not a totally free woman. But the Chumash seems to imply, ha, who Pasha, if she got totally free, so now she becomes a, a, a regular Bas Yisrael, a regular Jewish girl, who's now married to an Eved Ivri, you, so you get killed. So Reb Zeyra seems to say that the Chumash seems to imply that I'm correct, that if you have a Chatsi Shivka V'chatsi Bas Chorim, that was engaged to a person and the other, and somebody gave her and then the, she became totally free. So it just, the first Kedushin expands. And once the first Kedushin expands, that's what the Chumash is saying. Now she was, a, if she if she became free, and so the first Kedushin expanded and she's 100% considered a Jewish woman. If someone has an, uh, an adult relationship with her, she's a married woman, he would get killed. So we see, Rav Zeyr says, Gomru Kedushi Rushin. Their first Kedushin expands. Amale Abaya, Abaya says like this, According to Rabbi Shmuel, he learned that the Chumash was talking about when you have an Evid Ivri 100% married to, uh, who's, who's married to 100% Shifcha Kanainis. So according to him, what is the Chumash telling you? If someone would totally free her, that means if someone has adult relationship with her, you would get Misa, but she's not married. When she when she was married to the Ever Ivri as a Shifka Kanainis, she's a total guy. In one day, she becomes 100% a Jewish person. So if someone has an adult relationship with her right then and there, he would get Misa, but she didn't, she would have to remarry this guy because the first time she was married to the Eved Ivri, they were she was a goy, so the marriage wasn't really a marriage. What do you must must say in order for someone to get Misa with that woman? She she got totally hundred percent free the of an Iskadesha. Then she the guy remarried her. So Hachaname over here 
even if she, you learn pshat that the pasuk is talking about a half a shifcha and a half a baschorim, the only way you would get misa is shukhupsha. She became hundred percent free. Not that the first kedushin now expands. The first kedushin implodes, and she's not married to anybody because she now becomes a brand new person. The chazer of niskatcha. But in order for someone to get misa, she would have to redo the kedushin. So. Uh, uh, the net net of this whole thing is the Gemara has an interesting question. When a person is a half a Jew, right? When they become a full Jew, does that mean that means do they become now like they're born again? Gerishin is guy and and therefore they're brand new new ger. Or do you say no? They were a ger already from before fifty percent. Now they're just expanding their geris to become hundred percent. What's the nafkamina? Nafkamina is if if they were ma- engaged to somebody and then they got the other half free and then somebody else jumped in and gave her a kedushin, who is she married to? So Rav Yosef said she's married to a second person because she's now a brand new person and therefore she be, she's in this muskadeshes to Shimon. And Rav Zaira says, no, it just uh, the first to second kedushin doesn't mean anything. Shimon's kedushin is invalid. She was always married to Ruve, it's just that his Kedushin expands if now the other 50%, she gets freed by the other fi- partner, now she's a totally free person, so his Kedushin expands along with her Geras. One final piece of the Gemara, Amar Rav Huna Bar Katina, Rav Yitzchak, Masa, we said in the Mishnah that if a man is a Chatsi Evit, Chatsi Ben Chorin, we said, who is he going to marry? Can't marry Shifcha, can't marry a Ben Choran. So we forced the second master to free him, right? So Masa, the story goes like this. But Isha Achas, there was a woman. Again, she was owned by two people and one of them freed her. She was a half of a Shifcha, half of a Baschoran. And really, she can't marry anybody, right? Because maybe it's uh, maybe uh, is not going to work. So they forced the second master to make her a free girl. And now she's a total Jew and she can marry a regular a Jewish boy. Now, why did they why did they force, why did Bezdin force the master to make her a free person? Because we want her to get married. Why do we want her to get married? To have children. So we see that a woman is obligated to get married, to have children. Come on, would you say, they were following, this Bezdu was following the opinion of Rabbi Yochan and Bebreka, the Omar who said, both the man and the woman had the obligation of Puravu. The Torah says, both of them, God said to both of them, both of you should be fruitful and multiply. So that's why they forced this woman, they forced the master to free the other half of this chatsi shifcha v'chatsi b'schayim. Is that w- the reason why they did it? The Gemara says, Amar Av Nachma Yitzchak Loi, that's not the reason why they did it. Minik hefka no haguba. They were, the, the, she was a promiscuous woman because people looked at her as a half a shifcha, a hasabach schayim. She's a spinster. She can't get married. So people were being mizana with her. And now that they totally freed her, so either she'll have the potential now to marry somebody, uh, a regular Jewish boy, who's going to be a watch over her so that she's not Mazana. Or even if she doesn't get married again, well, she's not a Shifcha anymore. She's a total Ben Charin. She's a Penuya Yisrael. So it could be that's only also Medivere Seiferin to have Znus with somebody like that. So that's why they forced the Rabbah to make her a Ben Charin. Okay, Ben Hashem, tomorrow we'll continue with the Mishnah.